welcome back to Vacations in Florida. I'm Mark. Got my lovely wife Deanna here. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are in Nokomis, Florida. We're at the Royal Coachman RV Resort. We're having a great time. Uh, we've been here for a week. Going to be here one more week before we head back to our home base in Santa Rosa Beach. Up in the Panhandle. And we've got some things to wrap up. We've got a house we're trying to sell. Uh, thanks to Sally, we got a roof we got to repair. And a uh, little uh, things to tie up from our previous jobs, from which we retired back at the end of June. So we've been planning to leave around September, but it looks like it'll be November now. So we're being vacations in Florida, we want to get you a lot of videos in Florida, but we're going to be hitting the road travel to the U.S. eventually and uh, that's still up in the air as to where we're going uh, it's based on winter how winter's looking uh, we don't want to be driving in the ice and the snow uh, so we may stay south I don't know uh, we do eventually want to get up to the northern states like Indiana South Dakota Wyoming Montana and those areas uh, we may have to wait to spring but we're retired we're no hurry we'll eventually get there so uh, we may stay south, south of the snow line, and uh, we'll see where we can go. But that's just kind of our plans right now. Uh, we plan to bring you videos every Monday morning. So make sure you subscribe and please like them. Uh, we've been off the air for about a year and a half. Uh, I've posted a few videos over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we went to Louisiana, and then on the way down here, uh, we did a harvest host visit at uh, Sparacia Witherill Family Winery in Brooksville and that one's on our list you can watch that now uh, but we've got a lot of video we've been taking down here so that's probably going to be a few uh, videos that will be covering this area that we're at and then we'll see what we can get into later on we may take a trip to St. Augustine uh, it just depends on how everything goes right now but once we get all of the dust cleared uh, we're going to hit the road and then we'll take you along with us and hopefully have a good time and uh, show you some ideas that you can get used to. So without further delay, we're going to show you the camper. We've got a Grand Design Solitude 373 FBR and then uh, we bought the truck to tow it with is a F450 Ford and uh, we got both those during the early COVID months and got some pretty good deals. If you have any questions about uh, maybe the price or the size or anything like that of our RVs, or if there's something we didn't cover that you have questions about, because we don't, you know, I'm not going to cover everything. Uh, I want to keep this as short as possible. Uh, please let us know. Uh, drop us a uh, question in the comments, and uh, I promise you I'll read them and I'll get back to you. So here's our camper and our truck. Inside, we've got, uh, it came from Lazy Days RV in Tampa, that's where we bought it. It came with two batteries, regular lead acid batteries, and we're probably going to upgrade uh, to some other better batteries later. And the compartment over here, we're just kind of using it for storage, but that's where your generator would go if you bought one to go with this. And once again, we've got one we bought, and we'll go over that later. Okay, in this compartment, this is what we call the basement. Uh, it's a baggage pass-through compartment. And in this model, it's a pretty big one. And we need it, we use it up. It goes all the way through to the other side. Over here is your uh, LCI uh, hydraulic le jack leveling system. This is where you control it from. It's got six hydraulic jacks. Kind of look down at the bottom there. There's one of the front ones. Back up here. The great thing about this is it has a auto leveling system. So you can manually retract and extend the jacks. Right now we have a problem with the rear jacks extending, but we're going to get that fixed. And you have a set of instructions here that will help you along if you're new at it. 
But once you get uh, separated from your truck, you pull your truck away, make sure it's a wave. You hit your auto level. You always want to make sure it's wave because when your auto level always goes down and it'll strike your truck if uh, you got it under there. But once it auto levels, you'll get this little green light here and it'll uh, tell you that it's all level. Now, every now and then you have to recalibrate it, so you always want to check it periodically. We had to do it once. All right, over here in the water panel, down here on the bottom you have a gray and a black tank valve. And then down here on the bottom, you have two more. You have another black and another gray tank valve. But you got light in here, you've got this hose, you've got a, uh, connector on both sides which are controlled from these two valves up here and then uh, down here is a whole house filtration system then you have uh, shut off valves for your cold and uh, black or hot water okay over here is where you connect up your power cord and there's a nice little blue light up here that indicates that you have power coming to it so we have it parked in our driveway when we're at our home base and we leave power to it so we just keep the AC running all the time. And uh, if you look back here, hey, we have what's called the power watchdog. Okay, we have what's called a power watchdog. You see his face is lit up and if you get a power warning, it, it monitors what kind of power you're getting to your rig. If it senses anything bad, it's going to cut it off, and this will turn red instead of white. When it's disconnected, it's kind of clear. But that's a very important thing to have with any of that. Okay, something we added for the Furion camera system. Now on our rig, we have such a long rig, and I've actually created a little dent, which we're going to hopefully fix, because I backed it into a fence on the blind side where I couldn't see while I was backing. So we got this installed on both sides. And there's one on the back, which I'll show you here in a minute. Your hose connects up for your sewage right there. We added this valve. Highly recommend it. So if you don't, when you take the cap off, you're going to have residual fluid coming out. We also put a clear 45-degree uh, elbow on it, so when you're flushing it out, you don't have to walk all the way back to see if uh, the water starts running clear to make sure that you flushed your tank out properly. But this has a valve, so when you take the cap off, it's still closed and nothing comes out. Then you just hook up this hose, and these are good hoses to use. And you want to make sure that you have the right stand to use. Some places require that, but we use it anyway. And it just kind of goes down and all the way to your connector. As far as water, we have a secondary filter that we use along with the pressure gauge. Very important to have a pressure gauge here. We're running our speed 45 and 50 <laughs> PSI. Some of them have very high pressure and they will damage fittings in your camper if you're not regulating them with a pressure gauge like this. You can find that on Amazon. And then uh, this is uh, a pretty common filter. We just add it on right here at the faucet to the filter. To the regulator and then the hose all the way to the camper. Put this little Y on here because every now and then you might need to use a regular hose for washing or you might just want to come over here and turn on and wash your feet off or something like that. But it comes in handy if you need it. Okay, if you look up, that's our rear camera, the Furion system that we had. I installed it myself so I can tell you it wasn't hard to install it off. Top. I should come over here and look there. You'll see the slide topper, and those came with this rig. Most of the time, you have to uh, have those installed separately, and and they work pretty good. They get at keeping the sun off the top of your slides, and also the debris off the top of your slides. Uh, they just roll up inside that carrier that's connected to the outside of the slide itself and it just rolls up as it closes or unrolls as you open it. All right, and then up here, we got a couple speakers. Let me show you the other side of the passenger storage. I did keep this so I wouldn't forget, but that's your unloaded driveway to this rig. All right. 
it's got a light in here that you can turn on, some outlets. You also got some more connectors for your cable and satellite. And then down here is a vacuum system. You can operate it from inside or outside. And we'll show you the inside when we get in there. And you can see how much room you've got. We got plenty of space. We got a bunch of junk in there right now. But once we pack and have a moving day, then it gets, I've got it all organized a certain way. I got these little J hooks here. So uh, when we go put our fishing poles in here, they stay up and out of the way. And our bicycles just slide right in here. All we have to do is fold the handlebars. And then the latches, these are what they call slam latches. I highly recommend moving these periodically. Uh, they close that easy. Very easy to operate. Over here. And on the other side, we have two 30 gallon propane tanks. I, they do not come with a gauge or anything, so I went and I got uh, connectors with gauges. And on this side, I got a Y connector. And the reason I did that, you see this line coming off, it goes down and it goes to the grill I have right over there. <laughs> that way I can run the grill right off the old propane tubes. You don't use propane too much. We don't, you know, here in Florida, you don't really need to run the furnace. And uh, the only other thing you use it for is the stove and the oven. So for the grill out here, it's perfect. For your application, if you're up north or something, you might want to come up with something different, but I just bought an 18 foot propane hose and we got it hooked up to our Blackstone grill here. Just show you the ladder system here. This is the Mulright steps. And the nice thing is there's four steps, it's not three. So it makes it nice and easy to step up if you have some problems walking or whatever. This is Dixie. She's done come out. Now these lift up just using one hand and one finger. And then letting go, you can see where they're sitting. So they have a hydraulic strut system that makes it very easy to lift up and lift down. And you can see this bar here, it just bounces off the frame. And once you close the door, it stays nice tucked out of the way as you travel. And these little legs here, they adjust in and out, so if you need to adjust them when you're at your side. Different. Come on in. The control panel in this. Okay, right here. Get some light on the subject. But you got your tank panel here. Let's show you your batteries, fresh tank, blacks, and gray tanks. If I had a generator, this is your generator start panel, control panel. Uh, it does have a few light switches here that operate lights within the kitchen and living room area. And up here you got a little storage. That's just a fake door, but there's a storage part right here where you can still access that. And then you got your fuse pin. All right, and this is Dixie down here. Time to go outside. Okay, over here, this is your slide out. You got your kitchen. You've got a nice table, and the uh, support is up against the wall. So when your legs are up underneath, they're not hitting any poles or anything. It makes it nice. These kind of, it comes with four chairs. Two of these fold up. We've got one folded up in the bed, and then it has this extension. And that has to be folded because when the slide comes in, we found out hardly the very first day we had it is it'll hit the out. So that's a very important thing for you to make note of. We found that out the hard way. It didn't damage anything, unfortunately. We caught it in the tunnel. But nice dining room table. Dad. We've got theater. Okay, over here is the storage that's in the non foldable chairs. So you can place things in here. This is Deanna's workspace. She likes to do crafts, so she's got a few things in there. But it makes for a little nice. Uh, area to store things. Now these are in the two non-foldable chairs. Two foldable chairs have no storage obviously because they have to fold up. Okay. You have these nice huge windows. It gives you a nice look at that RV next to you or if you happen to be in a nice area where you can look at mountains, lakes or something like that. We had a nice view when we were in Louisiana. So that was very nice. Okay, over here is our theater seating. You've got USB ports, 
Uh, you need to apply heat as a massage, and then the foot rest goes up and down. And then there's actually little headlights in the foot of this. That's what I call them headlights. So for some reason you need to uh, see at night and it's really dark in here, you can hit that light. Over here, we've got dog beds here. We've got uh, this couch. It is a considered a queen. I would call it an RV queen, but it pulls out to a bed. And it's a nice size couch. You can also store things up underneath there. Uh, so if you want to have a blow up mattress or something like that, you got room in there for it. Over on the sides, you have a 110 outlet and you have USB connectors, and you got that on both sides. I did break the one on the other side, but I fixed to replace that. <laughs> so don't push hard when you're putting this stuff in. You've got these little scones and knives. They uh, come on and off with that switch, and they're nice. I mean, this thing's got lights everywhere. The only thing is these do not have any storage. So I would say that's the only downside. But you got plenty up here for storage all through here. As you see, we don't have hardly anything up here. I mean, there's so much storage in this unit, it's ridiculous. It's got these nice retro panels on it. Got the Wisconsin, and then over here, you got this beautiful fireplace. And uh, you can use it just as a visible thing or to actually work as a heater. And uh, it puts out a pretty decent amount of heat. So if we were, there was a couple of days where we actually had some pretty cold temperatures. We uh, turned it on and it's just fine. You've got this TV and it drops down behind the fireplace. There's another window back there. And then up here, you got more storage over here, but over here is your stereo system and DVD player. Now it does not play Blu-ray. And the new models, 21s and above, I believe, just don't, just have the unit and doesn't have the DVD player. So that'll be something to check into. Uh, they're a little, eh, on the fence about how these work. They don't work real great. It's hard to connect them up. You can connect them up Bluetooth, but they come and they go. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to pull this out and reset it, and try to get it to work. But we bought a Blu-ray player. And just put it right here. So if we want to see Blu-ray this, we just drop it. It works fine. There's also, if you need more storage, you can put more DVDs and things in there as well. Alright, put that back. Okay, got your island over here. Comes with a double sink. Nice swivelly faucet head. And this pulls out. Got two modes. Works really nice. Let's see, see how it pulls out. Something else we got, even though we've got a house filtration system and everything, is this uh, little unit that came from Zero Water. It's your typical Zero Water filter, but it comes in this nice little decorative. This is glass, and it's got an aluminum base, and then you just pop the top off, fill it up with water. A nice countertop for a camper. This is not bad. And then you've got this uh, oven, stove top in the oven. And it's got a good size oven in here, which uh, we recommend always getting yourself a thermometer. A lot of people will put pizza stones and stuff in here, but this one actually came with a black, uh, kind of like a shelf, which helps disperse the heat. These things are pretty quirky, so you might want to look into how to bake with these when you get them. But these are run off of propane. Got timer display and everything comes up here, and then uh, you got three burners up here, and then you've got this convection microwave, real nice, and it's very large. I mean, a lot of people just bake out of this thing, the convection. Comes with a pantry. It's not the biggest pantry, but well, it's not like we don't have a whole lot of room, and it has these nice pull-out drawers. So if you got something to get into all the lot, you can put it in there and just pull it out and get it instead of having to reach inside a cabinet to get it. We've got a uh, little Lady Susan right here. And you just spin her around to get the spices we need. <laughs> Don't get plastic, we done broke one. So we got a metal one on Amazon. It was, I think it was under 20 bucks. 
we got the R, the 373 FBR, means it has a residential refrigerator. This does not run on propane. But this is a Samsung. Very nice. All the controls are up here. And you can turn the ice on and off here. It's got a power saver mode and power cool mode. And then you can adjust the uh, refrigerator temp here and the freezer temp over here. But you've got tons of room in this refrigerator. And then down in the freezer, it has an ice maker, has a uh, little cabinet down here, and then has a pull out drawer. Now when you're traveling, because this doesn't run on propane, you want to keep it cool. There's actually a power inverter located over here on the wall. And you push this, see the little green light comes on. And that allows it to run off a 12 volt system. And you just turn it off when you're hooked up to shore power. And this is all the kitchen slide. From here all the way down to the TV is one slide. Take a look out. We got this nice decorative lights. And they light up separately. And we have all the lights on right now. This thing's just filled with lights. And they're above the seat and the dining room table as well. I don't have those on right now. But they're all LED so they don't pull a whole lot of power. That's real important. Especially if you're going to have a ton of lights in here. Up here is a max fan. Uh, there's a little switch over here for it. It has a rain sensor, so while you're running this fan, if it senses rain, it'll automatically cut off and close the door. Uh, but I did put covers on it, something you can get and I highly recommend it. So maybe you forgot to close that and you're traveling down the road, it's not going to rip that thing off. But those are kind of weak. I mean, it's talking about plastic, very small strips of metal that are holding each other together. So, uh, and then on top of that, these are like skylights, so we got smoke. Uh, covered uh, max uh, covers and uh, what that does is it blocks the enormous amount of sun coming in so if you don't you don't want to get too much sun in here you'll, you'll never pull this thing down and uh, that does real good we have one here and we have one in our master bedroom and then we have one in this other bathroom or we have one in the master bathroom and one in this bathroom all right and then over here an air conditioner and uh, some of the slides are open but uh, you can run it out here or it's got a racetrack network where you see these round vents and it'll come out of there as well or you can just open up these doors and it'll just come straight out so when you got a real super hot day you can control the air I'll show you the controller for that over here okay right here uh, it's got several settings including just fan and you can run it up and down just like a normal thermostat. And then this here is for your max air control for your fan. Turn it on, turn it off, or you can manually control it right here. Okay. Inside this door, we have a half bathroom. Oh, and let me turn on the cool light up there. It's just a cool light, but it looks cool. So we have a nice half bathroom, it has a nice sink, you got some storage, you've got a medicine cabinet with a mirror, and it's got the uh, foot flush toilet. And it's also got a nice air fan in it as well. Real nice. Okay, steps here. You have some storage underneath, you can see we got some shoes under here. You've got a connection for your vacuum hose, or you can sweep because we don't have any carpet in here other than what we laid and then suck it right up inside uh, the vacuum there now the vacuum bag is located in uh, where the vacuum connection was in the uh, baggage compartment okay up here before you come up got a nice pocket door it's got a magnetic latch and a little plastic strap for traveling Real nice. Come on up. In this unit, we got another air conditioner here. A little less BTU than the main one, but the but you have two ACs in here. So since we have two, we have a 50 amp system. If you got one, you're going to have a 30 amp system. But 
they require quite a bit of power, so uh, that's something you have to look out for. But we've got a king pad. Okay, you've noticed I've changed shirts. Well, that's because as editing, I realized our camera had turned off when I got to the king bed. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with that. Now this is our king bed. Got nice surround windows on each side and uh, a, little, a little transom over the top of the headboard. And then uh, under the king bed we have storage. And you can see where we have one of our folded up chairs in there and plenty of storage for other things. And there's a little shelf here, but it goes up up underneath there as well. This is our vacuum hoses for the camper. On either side of the bed we have USB connections right here there's two and a 110 outlet right here. That's located on both sides of our bed. Over here we have a TV, three other windows, and then down here we have these little benches and there's lots of storage in them. Six drawers, they're not real big, but uh, we have plenty of room in the front storage, which I'll show you here in a minute. Then also, uh, this lid of the uh, drawer, it lifts up. I've got a lot of stuff up there, but there's a little storage under there. You keep expensive stuff, jewelry, stuff like that. It's a great place to hide things. But we got a bench on both sides of this, and then we have an air conditioner up here as well. It's a little smaller BTU than the one that's up front, but it's very good at cooling. And then we got the control for it right here. And then over here we've got the sliding barn door in, leading into the bathroom. It's real nice. And there's a little latch right here. Okay, as you can see, we have two sinks. Now these weren't original faucets, but the, when we picked it up, we checked everything out and all three faucets, these two and the one in the other bathroom, had uh, construction debris within them and it wasn't allowing for any water to come out. So, uh, lazy days, RV in Tampa, where we bought it at, they replaced it with these, which are a whole lot better anyway. We really love them, but there's a little backlighting on the uh, mirror here, which makes nice ambiance. And then you've got separate lights in here if you need more lighting. But the lights up here. One more fan up here, and this one's not a max air fan, but you don't really need it because it's you can reach this ceiling. And uh, it's got a little switch and you can open it up and everything here, so it's real nice. Our shower, it's got a foot flush toilet right in front of it. Okay, it's got sliding glass doors and there's a latch to keep those open while you're traveling. And then we installed this uh, from Walmart, replaced the other one, which is very good on water saving. So if you're going to boondock, you want all your water saving type stuff put in here. And this is definitely one that uh, helps out. We got, like I said, 92, 93 gallon tank, and whenever you take showers and stuff, that takes up a whole lot of water. But when you're using one of these, that really is good for conserving water. We've got uh, storage here. We'll pull out, and then more storage down here. And there are 110 outlets on both sides of the uh, vanity here. This is a slide that actually comes in. This is our front slide. Then uh, where our bed is, that's another slide. And then the other two are the living room and the kitchen areas. Okay, in the front of the coach, we have these double doors, which latch on the bottom. They have this, but they don't stay closed. So if you want them closed, they'll come out just a little bit, but you have to latch them. So we have all this storage up front. This is the very front of the coach. There's a little step up. That's the only place we got carpet other than around the vanity and uh, then we have a washer and dryer which we had installed that's a great location for it stays out of the way it's all the way up here and uh, the lack of yours necessitated us to buy this so we have shirts and things like that and uh, this is kind of like a door setup and then we have more hanging space here still and then she added some hooks back there for purses. It goes back in there a little ways. There's lights in here as well. And uh, it's a very nice space. So have you seen the interior and exterior of our camper? Now I want to show you the F450 that we have to pull it with. Alright, we 
decided on the F450 when we bought our uh, truck, and the reason being is because this camper is huge. It's got a pretty good pin weight, it was, which was around 3,500 pounds, and uh, this and the 350 can handle it. The reason we went 450 instead of 350 is the steering radius is a lot tighter. I lower in the back, and by the way, when you lock the doors, this also locks, and it's got several cameras all around it. It's really nice as far as being able to back up into your hitch. There's a light in the cab light right above the back window, and it's very nice and handy for backing up to your uh, hitch. This here is a rolling lock. I did a lot of research on this. It's kind of an aftermarket thing I put on, but it's, it's aluminum. It rolls up into the front. I don't have to worry too much because I don't have a lot of stuff in here. So I've got enough room where I can roll it in there. If you got a lot of uh, stuff, you're going to lose about a foot, maybe six, 26, 12 inches in the front because this is going to take up that much room for this to roll up into. But it locks, so I don't have to pull my fifth wheel hitch out, worry about locking it, which it is still locked. But uh, I'm going to open this up. Got this nice little strap. Now when we bought the truck, it came with this particular hitch. It's a Reese hitch, and it's capable of 27,000 pounds, and uh, it's more than sufficient to handle what we have. It's a very simple hitch, but it's very effective as well. And uh, we, uh, I don't feel like you don't need to ask for things when you buy a vehicle, especially when you're spending this kind of money. So we asked for a drop-in liner, which they gave us, but at the end of the day, and they, they tried to install it, and they messed up the holes in it. So when we got to our home base, I called them up and they allowed us to get it rhino lined. So basically, the rhino lining in the bed of this truck, we got it for free. So that was a good thing. So up front there, on the right, you'll see a Predator 3500 inverter generator. We bought that for $799 at Harbor Freight. And we finally got to use it when we went to a har harvest host location. And we went to uh, the winery. Uh, they have actually no hookups, but it was a beautiful area we got to stay in. You'll see, and uh, we posted that video last week, and you could see it. But we used that generator all the time we was there. Uh, it's good for running one air conditioner if you need it. We didn't really need it. We ran the fan on it, and then all your lights and stuff. So you just got to know what your maximum capacity is for it. But it's sufficient for keeping you going when you're out in the middle of nowhere without anything hooked up. Okay. And then uh, another necessity that I bought is this nice little step. Now, because I bought this bare bones, it does not have the ladder system that comes out of the tailgate. So I bought this, and it just goes over the top of your outside tires on either side. That way I can step up on it, onto the tire, and over I go. It's a four by four. Now the only downside with the 450 is you have commercial tires on it, but they do last longer. These things have been working great, and they are 19.5. These are, that's the size of them. These are Continental Hybrid HD3s. I also added the, uh, went to Ford and had them install the mud flaps, because that'll keep stuff off your brand new expensive rig just by. Okay. Diesel cap. And then your DEF, that's your diesel exhaust fluid. So if you don't know anything about diesels, you might want to check into that. Uh, about every 3,500 miles, I have to fill this tank up, and that's usually about $20. Best to do it at one of the truck stops. And then this is where you uh, fill your diesel, and it's got a 48 gallon capacity. If you look up here, you'll see the amount of space that the rolling lock takes up. It just coils up inside there. Okay, we've got a four-door truck, and we have the two puppies, so uh, we just fold the seat up, and that's their whole area right there, but it's got a huge amount of room, it's got a lot of leg space, and you can see my buyer pump there, which is something else you'll need to get, because you've got high pressures, most of your normal air compressors won't be able to handle 110, 90, or even 80 PSI, which is what off the trailer and the truck take. So you want to make sure that you get something that can handle that. Mm -hmm. 
and in the front here you got all your you got a regular display uh, we've got uh, our TPMS system I showed you the sensor there's one of every single tire there's uh, six on the truck and the four on the solitude so you got ten total and then uh, you just turn this on and there's a little repeater that you install which I put inside that Ford baggage compartment on the camper and it'll track the air pressure of all your tires. It takes a little bit for it to come up. It'll give you the temperature, and it'll give you the PSI of each tire, and it'll constantly check it. You can see it's cordless, it's run by battery. You only gotta charge it every couple of days. If you run it two, you could probably run it two days in a row, and it'll have a full charge. Got some upfitter switches. You can connect anything you want up to about six that you can use that and then it's got this nice screen display like I say this is no frills it's got all the basic stuff but it's got enough it's, you can plug in your iPhone or Samsung or whatever it'll run it and then you have your uh, brake controller right here for your trailer dash and then you still got all the buttons on the steering wheel that you need and this will run that big old trailer with in cruise control works really good and you can see the big tires this is a bear to wash let me tell you we have had to change the windshield in at once you've also got these little strap connections here if got to help somebody pull out eventually I want to get a winch put in it's also got a camera here in the mirrors each one has one and two in the back it's got the 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel engine and these mirrors do extend out but you have to do it manually and then push them in manually but I am not paying $20,000 so I can hit a button and do it. And then here's what the other side of the interior looks like. So an awesome truck. Do you like it? You ready to drive it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got electric bicycles, e-bikes. These are from Vigo, D-E-E-G-O. Awesome company. Uh, we researched this as well. Uh, because the Anna needs a folding bike or and one that she don't have to raise her leg over too high because she has bad knees. And uh, this worked out great for us. But these, uh, we took them on the Legacy Trail and that was a good, probably 11, 12 miles we put on them. And they still had probably a third of the battery life left in them. So they're real good on the batteries. Got a headlight, tail light, gear selector knob, got a little bell. And it's got a display right here that'll show you what your battery level is, how fast you're going in miles per hour, four kilometers an hour. Uh, because we have one old doll, she has to ride in the trailer. We got a Booyah stroller on Amazon, or I'm sorry, at Walmart, wasn't it? And uh, not too expensive, but it's real nice. It just hooks up to the axle of the uh, bicycle here, and I don't even know what's back there. This works really well. But they come in different colors. Up that red, she got pink. Put a little basket on the back of hers, so they got a little rack on the back. And they come with uh, these batteries that fit behind the uh, post here. And uh, using the key is where you turn it on and off, and then you lift. This, this will lift up and then it'll slide right out so you can recharge it. Or you can recharge it right there on the bike. When we put it in the camper, all we have to do is just lower this end part in. It'll fit right inside that baggage compartment or the basement. Okay, right here we've got the 22-inch Blackstone Grill. We've, I've used this quite a bit so far. I mean, this thing's awesome. It's got two burners, and uh, you can see the connector right here, which is where you normally would put the tank. But we run this to our uh, tanks in the RV. So that's one less thing I've got to deal with out here. So uh, we got everything we need. We got it seasoned, and this thing is awesome. A lot of people, enjoy getting the 17 inch and that's fine that's the size you want for me sometimes we have a lot of friends over or whatever i just need there i like to have plenty of room to work 
instead of squeezing everything. Through. Hope we gave you, we gave you some ideas to help you get started at the very least. This is just a stepping stone to get you in the right direction, or you just might be curious about what we've got. Either way, we're happy. We hope you're happy. And uh, just continue on watching our channel, subscribe, like it, we appreciate it. And uh, stand by for the videos coming next week. We'll start showing you around this uh, campground and the things we've been doing around uh, Venice and McComas and Sarasota area. So, see you next time.